You know, guys, recently I said that the government of National Unity Caucus needs to form a communications team so that South Africans can hear from this communications team instead of relying on what they hear from the news publications. I mean, recently there is a letter that was trending all over the place. This is a letter of the demand by the DA to the African National Congress. And according to the ANC, this letter was leaked by the DA. And the ANC has made it clear that we do not appreciate the fact that the DA leaked this letter while the negotiations were still going on. We don't like that. Me personally, I was not shocked by these demands that were made by the DA. I was actually shocked by the response towards this letter. If you can go on social media, you could actually swear that the ANC has agreed to give the DA all of these ministries. This is the narrative that people were actually trying to drive, that the ANC has given the DA all of these demands, and the DA is going to get all of these ministers. This is why I was shocked. I am not shocked by these demands that were made by the DA because I understand that the negotiations are still going on and the DA is using their 20% leverage to get as much as possible in the government. They are using their 20% which is over 3.5 million votes to get as much as possible in this government of national unit. And at the same time, I understand that in the negotiations, you can make the demands, but it doesn't mean that all of your demands are going to be met. All the political parties that have joined the government of national unity there is something that they want. You remember that even recently, Gatin McKenzie said that if it was according to him, Patriotic Alliance would get the Minister of Police and they would get the Minister of Home Affairs. This is something that Patriotic Alliance wants, but it doesn't mean that this is something that Patriotic Alliance is going to get. These are still the negotiations. This letter of demands only shows us what the DA wants. But it doesn't mean that this is what the DA is going to get. Why is it so hard for people to actually understand that? Why is it so hard for people to actually understand that? And now people were trying to make joke of the ANC that how can the ANC shun the, DA, the EFF and MK party for making small demands and allowing the DA to make such ridiculous demands? And I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, the negotiations are still going on. It doesn't mean that the DA is going to get all of these demands that they want because if you can read here the demands that the DA wants in, in, in terms of the ministers the DA wants like what 11 minister ministers but this is not what the ANC actually is thinking about because there is a letter that the ANC has actually released and this letter shows that the ANC is offering the DA six ministers and seven deputy ministers this is what the ANC is offering to the DA because the DA has already gotten the deputy speaker and now they are negotiating about the seven deputy ministers and the six ministers in the cabinet. These guys, this is still the negotiations. It doesn't mean that if a political party says that we want the minister of fisheries, this is something they are going to get. This is not something they are going to get. This is what they want. But it doesn't mean that this is what they are going to get. So I was shocked by the response of the people for not understanding that the negotiations are still going on. Political parties are trying to leverage what they got in the elections to get what they want in government. Because I can tell you for free that all the political parties that are in the government of national unity are trying to get something. They're trying to get something. Don't you remember what Gatin McKenzie said a couple of days ago? That the reason why President Ramaphosa has not announced his cabinet is because the political parties that have signed the, state, the statement of intent are fighting for positions in the government of national unity. Everyone wants something in the government. This is the reason why it has been so hard for President Ramaphosa to actually come out and announce his cabinet. So I'm asking you, if you were a democratic alliance, you got 3.5 million votes, the ANC got 6.4 million votes, and you come with the 3.5 million votes, how many posts would you actually want? And how many posts would you actually accept? This is the question I have to the people that say that these demands are ridiculous. How can the DA come and make such ridiculous demands? 
if you come with 20% to the political party that actually got 40%, how many posts would you actually demand? And if you don't get those posts, how many would you actually accept? These are negotiations. Why is it so hard for people to understand that all the political parties are making the demands? But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that all of these demands that they are making are going to be met. Ah, South Africans are disappointing, man. All right, let's get into this conversation now. The ANC maintaining that the formation of the government of national unity is on track despite a dispute with the Democratic Alliance over cabinet posts. A leaked letter from the DA's Federal Council Chairperson, Helen Ziller, uh, showing that the party wants 11 cabinet posts. Well, you might say 11, some are saying 12. Nomvula Mokonyane is the ANC's first Deputy Secretary General. She is going to answer that question. The ANC yesterday, by the way, slamming some GNU members for what it said were outrageous demands. So let's get those details now. The reason why the ANC is slamming some of the government of national unity parties for making demands is because everyone is demanding something. People understand that the ANC is limpy. People understand that the ANC is limpy. So if you're going to agree to be part of the government of national unity, there is something that you need to get. Because this government of national unity, it is not like the government of national unity in 1994. The government of national unity in 1994, it was just kumbaya. But the fact of the matter is that the ANC won the elections with 60%, over 60%. So there was no need basically for ANC to enter into the government of national unity. But for Kumbaya reasons, it made sense for Nelson Mandela to actually form the government of national unity. But right now, it's a different story. The ANC it does not have the majority. And if the ANC had the majority today, they would not form the government of national unity. The only reason why the ANC has decided to form the government of national unity is because they are limpy. It's because they need as much help as possible. So political parties are joining the government of national unity not because it's patriotic, not because it is the right thing to do. They are joining the government of national unity to leverage what they are bringing in the government of national unity to get something in the parliament. So are you going to blame the Democratic Alliance for actually wanting something in these negotiations? All the political parties want something in these negotiations. Why are people acting like the DA It is the only political party that wants something? in these negotiations. All the political parties want something in these negotiations. I mean, why, why, why were South Africans making so much noise? Why? Why were South Africans actually making so much noise? I don't understand. I don't understand. These are negotiations. When Ramaphosa is ready to announce his cabinet, it means that all of them, they would have reached a consensus that this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to get. This is what I'm going to get. This is what this guy is going to get. And this is what this lady is going to get. When Ramaphosa says that we are going to announce our cabinet, it means that there would be a consensus in the GNU. But the fact that Ramaphosa has not announced his cabinet, it shows you that they are still negotiating about the demands that are made by political parties that have joined the government of national unit. Now the ANC needs all these parties that have joined the GNU. They, they need them. They need them. Without them, they don't have the majority. They cannot do anything. They cannot do anything. So would you blame the DA for actually making the demands when they got so many votes? Do you blame the DA? <laughs> As to where <laughs> negotiations are, and Ms. Mokonyane joins us in studio this evening. Good evening to you, and uh, thank you very much for your time. The, hung the country is hungry for news on this GNU. What can you tell us about these GNU talks? Thank you very much once more for inviting us um, on behalf of the ANC. Um, the ANC received the outcome of the results and out of it made a call 
that uh, we will be inviting various uh, all political parties to form a government of national unity, having looked at various options. Where are we now? We have uh, um, 10 parties that are represented in uh, parliament, uh, having signed um, the, the, state, the, the, the statement of intent. We also have a process that is in line with the statement of intent, where the president is in contact with leaders of the different political parties on uh, the way forward. And finally, it will be the prerogative of the president, as it is outlined also in, uh, in the very statement of intent uh, as to what needs to happen, the prerogative of the president, the respect of the constitution, including uh, the selection of cabinet uh, ministers. The Democratic Alliance says it wants 11 or 12 cabinet posts. You'll confirm as to how many the exact number is, but failure to deliver on that, the GNU deal is off. Fair demand? There is no GNU between the ANC and uh, the Democratic Alliance. We called all political parties. And, and Nomvala Mkwanyani is making it clear, like there is no GNU between the ANC and the DA. This is the GNU between the ANC and all the political parties that are represented in parliament. This is the reason why, guys, I keep calling for, for, for the GNU caucus to actually form a communications team so that these matters can be communicated. This is why I keep calling for a communications team. Because right now, people are simply going and listening to what the mainstream media is saying. They're simply listening to what the propagandists on social media are saying. Instead of looking at the fact that there is no GNU between the ANC and the DA, there is a GNU between the ANC and all the political parties that are represented in parliament. I mean, even after the 10 parties joined the government of national unity, you still have people that are saying that this is the coalition of the ANC and the DA. And how? How is this a coalition of the ANC and the DA, whereas there are 10 political parties? 10 political parties? <laughs> they themselves responded to that. They've put their, pro their proposals and they leaked that to the media when there are processes of negotiations that have been taking place as well as consultation between the various leaders of political parties. Mm -hmm. What the Democratic Alliance has done is again a misstep, including a misunderstanding of what we seek to achieve, that it is not an exclusive arrangement of the DA together with the African National Congress. Because if you look at uh, uh, Rule 23, of, uh, of the very statement of intent. It Let's look at it, guys. Let's look at it. You know, I've decided not to be lazy today. I've decided not to be lazy today, man. <laughs> so today I'm not rushing to anything. I'm not rushing to anything. And it's very important, man, for us, even us as South Africans, man, to, to, to read this statement of intent so that we can understand what people are talking about. I mean, like, it's, it's, it's very important for us to do so. Otherwise, we will be misled by the information that we can easily find on the internet. We need to be able to say that, okay, this is what they, they, they have agreed on. Okay, let's not look at these ones because... Is different sections. I want that one that I got the last time. Okay, this is it. This is the one that I got last time. I think it was in politics web. This is what we we also need to do this man as South Africans so that we can read and, and, and try to to understand what these people have actually signed. Because when we listen to radio, when we watch a television, when we go on social media Sometimes we tend to allow people to lie to us about what has actually been signed. We actually allow people to interpret to us what we can read ourselves. We don't need to do that, man. We need to start reading these things. And, and, and me, I must say that I, I, I have started, man. I have started, I have started reading these things and trying to, 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 to make sense of it. I will find that statement of intent that I read the last time. 
that one is quite clear man uh, because this one's that that has different that has different sections i cannot understand which is 23 and what there is that one that i read the last time okay 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 20, 21, 22, 23. Okay, this is the one that she's talking about. Can we make it bigger? I don't know if you guys can see. It says that parties to this agreement will form a government of national unity consultations council that will be responsible for consultations and monitoring processes on the minimum programs of the government of national unity and alignment of the seventh administration program its insourcing and implementation mechanisms parties to this agreement will form a government of national unity consultations councils that will be responsible for consultations and monitoring progress on the minimum programs of these government of national unity and alignment of the seventh administration program its resourcing and implementation mechanisms this this is the role that nombolo mkonyane is actually talking about it actually speaks about inclusivity that must accommodate all parties that are represented in parliament and not those that have got uh, bigger numbers because every vote counts and the fact that people have got a seat in parliament, we need to appreciate that they themselves have to be accommodated. And anyone who then seeks to take a responsibility that is not within the spirit of the statement of intent, again, is actually acting in bad faith, including what has happened with the leak of the, of the letter, as well as uh, not going back to the negotiations, as I've come here from... Again, continuous engagements with all other parties that some of them were meeting for the fourth time. So and guys, you remember the last time when Helen Zille did that interview with Clement Manyatela? I said, man, the fact that the, the members of the government of national unity are consulting with each other on the media, it is not going to be a good thing. It is not going to turn out well. It is not going to turn out well. Because I think, again, they need to have Someone who's going to be able to tell South Africans that, guys, this is the position of the government of national unity. This is where we are as the partners of the government of national unity. Maybe this is where we are actually do have a bit of disagreement in the government of national unity. Instead of all the political parties being on the media, going to different programs and trying to tell South Africans what is it that is happening. Because at this point, the South Africans are confused by the fact that one day, the DA is doing the interviews. The second day, Getin McKenzie Patriotic Alliance is doing the interviews. Bantu Holomisa, the UDM is doing the interviews. And you see, everyone is doing the interviews. And there needs to be one voice coming from that block. If you sign a statement of intent, you, you also need to sign that there needs to be vo one voice. You guys cannot go out and do the interviews. Because at the end of the day, it is not going to work out well for you. It is not going to work out well for you. It is not. It is not. So I hope this is something that they can actually address as soon as possible. Because if they're going to form a government and not actually address how they approach these matters, this government of national unity is going to collapse because of what people are saying on the media, because of the fact that these political parties are contradicting each other on different news shows. It is very dangerous what they are doing. Because we'll never tire in engaging anyone. Nobody can give us an ultimatum because it is not about an individual party, it is not even about the NC, it is about the future of this country and the respect of everybody who's represented in parliament through all other political parties that are, are represented there. The back and forth that we have seen publicly now, at least in the public's eyes, starting with Figile Mbalula, Helen Zile, and again Helen Zile, this back and forth, has it only been with the DA? There's been a back and forth with many, many, including those that are as yet to make a public announcement as to whether they are in or they are not in. Uh, there are parties that we've met four times. <laughs> there are parties that we've interacted with uh, three times. Mm. There are parties that still want to meet us even today. Mm. And they've been much decent.
because they've never gone public and they've never made it a, a, a dramatic kind of a stance where there is no agreement. What is of importance also, Koli, is that we, we're doing something that is not necessarily a, a wish by any party, because when you contest elections, you contest to win. But here we are now. We need to actually work within the spirit of appreciating the decision made, by, the choice made by South Africans. And where we are today, looking at international best practice of uh, putting together a, a coalition governments or governments of national unity, not a single country globally has been able to put a government of national unity or a coalition within a week. And I dare say we are almost at the doorstep. Okay. Well, that's promising. Almost at the doorstep. <laughs> that's a headline in my standards. We are. So <laughs> let's conclude with the Democratic Alliance. Have you settled on their demand? We saw that letter and it lists a number of portfolios. Where are you? In relation to that no self-respecting organization can actually settle on what the DA is putting because it is like they are imposing what they believe is good for them they must actually appreciate that we all serve at the behest of the president in line with the constitution secondly that there are there are parties that also have to be accommodated because in line with uh, a, a rule 23 of the SOI the statement of intent you our intention is to appreciate and embrace everybody. And therefore, we, 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 we are not responding to the demands of the Democratic Alliance. In negotiations, it's a give and take. And uh, the ultimatum that they have put is again an act, uh, an act that shows that uh, their intention is not to be inclusive, but an assumption that it is a coalition of the DA and the African National Congress, and maybe one other party, because they signed earlier. The fact of the matter is that they signed on the same day with the Patriotic Alliance, if they care to know, and if South Africans have to be told. We have many other parties that sign. All other parties have come, and nobody would be left behind, because again, as I've said, to bring everybody together, you need to be tolerant, you need to be accommodative, and of importance, you need to also respect the spirit of the South African constitution in terms of the role of the president and his prerogative or her prerogative for the future. So the ANC is offering the DA six ministerial positions and, se and seven deputy ministers plus the deputy speaker of parliament. Do you think that is a fair deal? Tell me guys in the comment sections, do you think that is a fair deal? six ministers in the cabinet and seven deputy ministers and the deputy speaker is already in the bag for the da do you think that is a fair deal to the da considering the fact that there are other nine political parties in that government of national unity and all of them they want something all of them they want something and chances are some of them they are going to drop out of the government of national unity if they don't get what they want Meaning that the ANC is skating on very thin ice. I remember even last time, Gaten McKenzie was asked, "Man, are you going to drop the government of national unity if you don't get the minister of police and do, you don't get the minister of home affairs?" He says, "Man, we are. We, we, we're going to have to consider. We're going to have to consider." Because our people did not vote for us to go and be in government and to, to, to just be the blown pots. I mean, our people actually want us to get to work. So if we, we are not going to, to get sufficient power for us to execute the mandate or that our people has given to us, then we will have to concede. We will have to concede. So is it a fair deal to the DA? Guys, please, please tell me on the comment sections. Six ministers and seven deputy ministers considering the fact that there are other nine political parties and all of them, they want something. Is it a fair deal? If the Democratic Alliance's demands are not met, is the ANC willing to walk away from this uh, agreement, at least with the Democratic Alliance? But before you answer that question, I need to take a break. You'll answer. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the ANC... 
inviting other political parties, many political parties, I must say, it shows us that the ANC is actually preparing themselves in case the DA drops out of the government of national unity. This is the reason why the ANC has actually invited other political parties to come and join in the government of national unity because they knew that something like this was going to happen. They knew that along the way, there is going to be a stalemate between us and the DA. So they invited other political parties so that they can have a backup if the DA decides to leave the government of national unity. So other people are saying that if the DA leaves the government of national unity, then chances are parties like Freedom Farm Plus, parties like IFP are also going to leave, which is going to be the problem for the ANC. This is what people are actually speculating, that if the DA leaves, you can bet that not only one political party is going to leave, which is the DA, but other political parties are actually going to leave, and that is going to cause the problems for the DA. So I think ANC inviting other political parties, they are just making sure that if the DA leaves, we, we can still have sufficient numbers. Because as things stand, I think if the DA is out of the calculation, the ANC has like 200 seats. And in Parliament, it's 400, so the NC has like 200 seats. So they only need like one or two political parties so that they can give the DA the middle finger. Is it, was this the plan of the, day, of the NC from the start to use the DA to get the president, to get the deputy, to get the president, to get the speaker of the, of the parliament, and after that, dilute the power of the DA? Was this the plan of the NC? Was this the grand plan? of Cyril Ramaphosa to actually dilute the power of the DA by inviting thousand political parties in the government of national unity. And if you were the DA, how would you actually feel seeing that the ANC is literally trying to dilute your power? You can see that the, the ANC is trying to make sure that this stronghold that the DA had, we, we, cannot, we cannot go with this stronghold that the DA actually has, we need to make sure that these people's power is actually diluted. We need to make sure that if tomorrow the DA says, we don't want to be part of this shenanigan anymore, we are out of here, the ANC can still govern the country. How would you feel if you were the DA? <laughs> Immediately after. Let's take a break. Man. You're watching News at Prime, and if you're just joining us, we are in conversation with uh, the ANC's first Deputy Secretary General, Nomvula Mokonyane, and it's all got to do with the GNU talks. Ms. Mokonyane, uh, thank you for staying. There are those who've lampooned you publicly as a party to say it seemed that you did not read key clauses of this agreement with the Democratic Alliance in particular, and therefore you may not have familiarized yourself with what they would ultimately uh, demand. Is the ANC willing to walk away from this agreement with the Democratic Alliance if the positions remain intransigent? It is up to the Democratic Alliance to make a determination. We have read it properly. We also are inviting them and the public to also re that clause about the 60%, it's proportional to those that are in parliament and not what the Democratic Alliance seeks to interpret. Secondly, we emphasize that processes of government are defined by the constitution and are legislated, and it is up to them if they do not want to reflect on that. So for anyone to assume that it is us who have not read properly, it is because there's been selective selective reference, including wrong interpretation, in a narrow and self-fulfilling self, self gesture by the Democratic Alliance. All other parties understand. So it can't just be about the Democratic Alliance. And unfortunately, we now have the letter that has gone out public and them moving away from the negotiating table and issuing these kind of statements when we could have actually been sitting together like everybody else and make each other to understand. If they believe they are not satisfied with what is on the table, it is up to them. We invited them. If they do not want to become part of this 
memorable occasion that the ANC is spearheading, let South Africans see them for who they are. Is it true? And <laughs> and a couple of days ago, the ANC could not speak like this about the DA. Couple of days ago, the ANC could not speak about this like, about about the DA like this. This is the reason why many people actually think thought that the grand plan of the ANC, the plan that the DA actually didn't see coming, is the fact that the DA was going to help them elect the president and the speaker of the parliament, and the ANC was going to dilute their power. Because right now, like the arrogance that has been displayed by Novela Mkonyani actually shows us that okay, we as the ANC have or we have actually prepared ourselves for any decision that the DA might actually make. You see, in this whole negotiations, man, one thing that I have realized is that political parties in this country are so good to actually use South Africans' ignorance against them. They are so, you, they are so good, man. Like, if there's one thing I will give the political parties in this country is the fact that they can manipulate the people of this country because the people in this country are so quick to react. I remember last time someone saying, Thomas, why don't you talk about the ridiculous demands that were made by the DA to the African National Congress? Why don't you talk about that? You don't talk about the DA. I always try to let the, the dust settle so that we can actually try to get where the parties are. You remember last time it was that thing of the Democratic Alliance saying that the ANC did not read Clause 24. The Clause 24 that says that they cannot invite other political parties without the, the, the DA actually being consulted. And people made a lot of noise after Helen Ziller said that. But a couple of days after that, the chief whip of the ANC, Mdumiseni Tuli, came out and said, no, this clause is going to kick in after the parliament has been constituted. So people are quick to react in this country. And I also blasted the ANC by not making it clear because some of these things that they agree to, they are not made clear. So this is the fault of the ANC that you, you didn't make it clear in the statement of intent that this thing is going to kick in after the parliament, after the, the cabinet has been introduced, after the government has been formed. But the thing I'm trying, the, the point I'm trying to drive is that the South Africans are quick to react. When one story comes out, the people are there full force. They are there full force. This is the reason why when the DA leaked this letter, the people were quick to, to, to yeah, the DA is crazy. How can the DA do that? How can the DA make the demands? But as an adult, when you are sitting back, you are like, bah, this is negotiations. We are all making demands. Whether those demands will be made or what, it is the matter, or like, like that, that is something that will be discovered in, in due time. And yesterday, I think yesterday, or a day or, or, or so, came out that email that Figlin Baluda actually sent to the Democratic Alliance, showing that the ANC is offering the DA six ministerial positions and seven deputy ministers. And after that email of the NC to the DA went out, people didn't say nothing. This is the reason why I'm saying it is so dangerous at how South Africans are actually interacting with these matters. South Africans do not let the matters actually settle down a bit so that we can actually see what was happening. We can actually see what was happening. Can you imagine if South Africans had, had waited after Helen Ziller went on SABC and said that the ANC does not have the right to invite other political parties without consulting with the DA. Can you just imagine if South Africans had waited for a day or two days so that the ANC can come and say that, no, this clause, the DA is predict predicting it this way and we think that we have agreed that this clause will actually kick in once the government has been formed. I think that way South Africans can actually have a meaningful debate about this clause. But because the South Africans are quick to react, when the other, when the other story actually comes out, they, they, like, they do not even know how to react because they have already wasted all their time on the initial story. And it is very dangerous. It is very dangerous. It is very dangerous.
the suggestion that that letter that's been leaked publicly has subsequently been withdrawn. Is that, is that true? I'm not a member of the DA. I'm sure you know where to find them. It is now a public document. With it being withdrawn or not withdrawn, it's actually an unfortunate thing that they've done. But what is important with us, for us is that we will not, will not concede to things that actually are beyond what the Constitution dictates and what is in the spirit of a government of national unity. It's not about the democratic alliance. We can still form a government of national unity with or without the DA. But how easy or difficult would that be? I mean, that will take stitching up of a whole range of parties. In fact, speaking about a whole range of parties, you had a conversation today with Action SA. What was that about? Our meeting went, went very well. Um, they also expressed the support of a government of national unity and them actually playing a very constructive and effective opposition which is also quite important in the spirit of uh, a government of national unity and that is the approach that both ourselves and the and the and, and action sa have supported which again shows that for them it's not about occupying a cabinet post yeah. like some are now talking about give us this post they are saying we want to be part of this journey of bringing South Africa. And the ANC again must not play with the people and pretend like the political parties can join the government of national unity without demanding the cabinet post. Of course, the parliament, the, 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 the parties that have joined the, the government of national unity, they should demand the cabinet post. They should. They should. So do not clamp, do not clap your hands for the for, for action SA simply because action SA said we're gonna sit on the side and if you guys actually propose something that we agree with, we're gonna vote with you. No, like do not act like people must not demand the cabinet post. The political parties that have joined the government of national unity, they should demand those cabinet posts. Because what the ANC is trying to do, man, it is uh, like uh, it is a reverse psychology. That you guys must not demand the cabinet post. If you demand the cabinet post, it means that you are greedy. You are greedy as hell. Do not demand the cabinet post to the DA. Just come with your 20%. Just come with your 3.5 million votes. Just come with it and, and let us continue to run the country. Let us be the ones that are the ministers and the deputy ministers and the DGs and everything. No, that's not how it should be. The political parties that have joined the government of national unity should understand that the ANC is limping, so everyone should demand something. They should. Africans and knitting everybody together, but our preference is to be an effective partner in the government of national unity, being on the opposition side. We graciously accepted that. What does that mean? I'd like for us to interrogate that a little not, bit. When not they everybody. say they want to play constructive... Uh, opposition in Parliament, I think I read into their statement that in some instances where there are areas of convergence, Action SA would be willing to vote with the ANC and its GNU partners. And of course, where they have to be firm and say this is nonsense, they're willing to say that as well. Am I understanding it correctly? One of the things that you need to go and look at is the manifesto of Action SA mm -hmm. um, on, on the area of health, for example. They almost are at the same space where the African National Congress is, just to cite an example. Um, where they, they also are emphasizing is that, yes, there will be instances where we will be critical of government, where we would actually put alternatives compared to what government is bringing, but will not disrupt government, will not actually undermine the House, and thirdly, will not be an opposition that will refuse to interact with, with yourselves. And remember where Action SA comes from. And for us to be together in the space where they say, we want to be an effective, constructive opposition, and let's look at our role in ensuring that this government of national unity will be held accountable. I think it's a great move for South Africa. It is. I, I want to move from this point. If the DA does pull out, <laughs> how many political parties realistically would you need to stitch together in order to form Man. a government of national unity? We, we are able to move. If the DA pulls out, this is what's going to happen. If the DA pulls out, 
the ANC, NEC, is going to recall Ramaphosa. Paul Mashadilo will be the president of the, N of the ANC. EFF and MK Party will join the ANC in that coalition. All the political parties that have signed the statement of intent, they will be kicked out if the DA pulls out. So I think this is the reason why, again, the DA knows, the DA knows that Ramaphosa and his presidency, man, they are, they are betting on us. <laughs> they know. They know. Because if the DA pulls out, which political parties can actually come and stitch up that number? The only political parties that can come and stitch up that number, it is the EFF and MK party. But there is no way that Ramaphosa is going to work with those political parties. So the NEC is going to, to call him or he's going to resign and say, guys, I tried to do this government of national unity thing, so I, I have failed. So as the president of the ANC, I'm resigning. Paul Mashatile will come and take over. Paul Mashatile will come in. Julius Malema and President Zuma will be called in. All the political parties, nine political parties in the government of national unity will be kicked out. And it will be a coalition of the ANC, EFF, and MK party. This is how it's going to happen. Like th There is no way the ANC can, st can stitch up that 20% without the EFF and MK party. There is no way. No way. On with everybody, including the DA, but we're also able to move with uh, all those that are signatures, the 10, out of the 10, the 9, and, and be able to, 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 to do the business and appoint cabinet because president doesn't actually need to have uh, a 50 plus 1 to appoint a, a members of the legis members of parliament to become members of, of, of the cabinet. And therefore the NC is in a well positioned uh, position to no, can not. move on and uh, we are ready. We just hope that the Democratic Alliance will appreciate the mandate that it has been given. Um, and, and for us, um, through the work that the president is doing with the leaders of various political parties, including the leader of the DA, uh, Mr. Stian Eisen, um, we'll be able to find one another. But we are not trapped in the relationship. You, are. You, not, you may not be trapped at national, but you will be compromised in Gauteng. We may not be trapped. We, we are even ready. Remember. And also remember that the DA said that, man, if our thing does not work in the government of national unit, we are pulling out. We are pulling out. Left, right, and center. Gauteng. KwaZulu Natal. We are pulling out. <laughs> so if the DA pulls out, even in KwaZulu Natal, can you imagine what's going to happen? Do we say that IFP Premier? <laughs> in Kwasul Natal will be kicked out. <laughs> so you are kind of trapped, man. You are kind of trapped because you had, like, there were two decisions that you had to make. It's either you went with the ANC, with the EFF and MK party, or with the DA. Of course, you came with the government of national unity too. Yeah. But of course, you are trapped. As things are, you are trapped. You are trapped. You are trapped. Whether you like it or not, you are trapped. Because if the DA pulls out, everything collapses. From Houghton to, to Nata, everything collapses. We said, we're even ready to sit in the opposition benches. <laughs> we're even ready to form a minority <laughs> government. We're ready for anything that will take South Africa forward. We can't be delayed and we can't be blackmailed <laughs> by those who have the appetite of creating confusion and sowing unnecessary divisions and anxieties in this country. These processes are going fairly well. Mm. And what is interesting, some of those who had told us a week ago that they no longer want to hear anything from us, they are now calling us now as I'm coming here to say, can we meet? Precisely because of the character of the ANC, we're still ready to meet with them as well. Uh, we have to talk uncomfortable matters at times. And this is one of those moments. Yes, the Democratic Alliance may be a GNU partner, but how easy or difficult is it to deal with a party that harbors alleged racist <laughs> bigots within it? How difficult is it going to be for you publicly 
to sell this GNU to someone who says, I can't stomach the DA, particularly for the people that it has within its ranks. When you look at uh, the country and, and the parties that are, 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 are in existence here in South Africa, um, the, there's a history that goes with uh, many of those uh, parties, um, and, and yet we're able to sit around the negotiating table and negotiate the future of this country. And that is one of the things that South Africa must actually appreciate. Um, we, we, we have uh, stability here in Gauteng, in KwaZulu-Natal, when uh, the IFP and the ANC were at loggerheads and there were killings in Kumalo Road, there were killings in Swaneville, in Kakiso, um, but we're able to embrace one another in the spirit of uh, nation building. And even with this one, we have condemned it, we abhor racism, and it is upon the very party to act in a manner that shows that it is not in their name. Did you discuss and it? It has been raised, and that's why you have seen the DA actually taking the kind of position that they have taken. Any issue, nothing that can affect a government of national unity is not discussed. Well, talking about uncomfortable matters, Zizi Gota was sworn in in Parliament today as a member of Parliament. This is after he was charged. Remember, he was charged even before the parliamentary process. He <laughs> voluntarily stepped away from his ministerial position. He stepped away from ANC, NEC activities. Was he under the ANC instructions to go and be sworn in today? Honestly speaking, I've, I've come to hear of this process. Um, we've been in negotiations. And of course, uh, Comrade Zizi had taken a, a decision to step aside from any public office and in representing the ANC. The implications of uh, him being sworn in may not necessarily mean that he will be a member of parliament, precisely because the lists are not being changed now. And uh, he may not actually be appointed or assigned any duty by the ANC and by parliament. If the ANC has to forfeit one vote, vote in parliament because of this, it is again what is good for the movement and good for the people of South Africa <laughs> to see us being consistent. I like how Numbula Mkwenyani always portrays the ANC as this honorable movement man, that has done so much for the people of this country. It's good for the movement <laughs> and good for the people of South Africa to see us being consistent that if you step aside, you step aside. Remember, he has not been found guilty. So he's stepping aside from executing the responsibilities. So he, he will be in the role of members of parliament without actually assuming any responsibility. Is, it, is it drawing a salary though? I'm not sure about those issues. Of course he's going to draw a salary. I mean, he's a member of parliament. Of course he's going to draw a salary. So Nomvulam Kwenyan is telling us that Nomvulam, that Zizi Kwato is going to be in parliament and he will not be assigned any roles, but he will be in parliament. Will, will, will he be drawing a, salam, a, a salary? I'm not sure about that. Of course he's going to draw a salary. So guys, here we, like, there you have it. <laughs> Zizi Kwato is going to be the member of parliament. He's not going to do anything in the parliament. Anything, but he's going to get the salary. He's going to get the salary. He's going to get the pegs. That one we are sure of. They must not play with us. That one we are sure of. And another thing, this whole step aside, man. I think this whole step aside policy of the NC it needs to step aside. The step aside policy of the NC needs to step aside because it is it, it is fair right now to say that the step aside policy of the NC has actually been used against the Ramaphosa's enemies. It is not a fair step aside because if the step aside of, or, or, or was actually genuine, people like Nomvulam Konyani would not be working with the president. Nomvulam Konyani was exposed in the Sondo Commission. Like Angelo Agrizi, man, what Angelo Agrizi did to this woman, man, it, like it's going to take years for anybody to try to attempt anything like that. Nomvulam Konyani was exposed in the Sondo Commission. So if that step aside actually worked, but I understand the step aside said, if you are charged, but anyway, people who are exposed like Nomvula Mkonyani would actually not be working with the president. And how many people were actually charged in the ANC and not being 
asked to step aside. So this step aside of of, of the ANC, it is only used against the people that are against Ramaphosa. It has nothing to do with restoring the dignity of the ANC. It has nothing to do with restoring the integrity of the ANC. It has everything to do with eliminating those that are against Ramaphosa, the likes of Isma Khashule, the likes of Museben Zizwane, and so on and so forth. But it, like, it, it is not something like we, we can actually ride home and we can actually say, okay, it is not something that we can actually comment. Not, not at all. You've been a member of parliament for a long time. I've been a member of parliament. I've never stepped aside. And I think it is these kind of things that we definitely have to, to look at. I, I know that uh, there are other members of par parliament like Bongani Bongo who also stepped aside. Uh, and, and every time when there was supposed to be a, a vote or whatever, the NC will call him. And, and we know also of Comrade Zandile in KwaZulu Natal. So I really Zandile hope Gumet. that uh, the, both the Integrity Committee and all other relevant bodies of the NC will advise the Wipari and, uh, and, and, the, and the ANC accordingly on Comrade C's. Ms. Mokunyan, you are an office bearer within the ANC. The step aside rule is there for South Africans to read. They've seen some people stepping aside and indeed forfeiting even salaries. This particular step today, does it not make a mockery of the ANC's step aside rule? Does it not make a mockery of the ANC's commitment to walk away from its image of corruption? I really hope that it will be again in Comrade Ziz's uh, 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 conscience that uh, he will write a letter to the legislature, to parliament, and indicate that I have been sworn in because I was in the list that was already submitted to the IEC. And therefore, on the basis of me having been charged, I now submit my letter of stepping aside. As <laughs> he's not going to do that. He's not, he's not going to do that. <laughs> He's not going to do that. He's not going to do it. He's not. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> He's not, man. Zizi Kota is a comrade, man. Zizi Kota is a comrade. There is no way in hell <laughs> that Zizi Kota is going to, to let his conscience actually push him away from the privileges of being in parliament. There is no way. <laughs> if I was Zizi Kota, there is no way I was going to consider something so horrible. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. Zizi Kota, man, I don't know why Zizi Kota resigned from from his duties, man. Zizi Kota was never supposed to resign, man. The NC is, is not a, an organization that actually has, like, the NC is not an organization that thrives on the integrity and it is not. It is not. Zizi Kota was supposed to stand down on ten toes. Stand down on ten toes and let his court cases be the ones that actually push him aside. I mean, people like like Novelam Konyani, man, like she, like, she didn't care what was said about her in the Zondo Commission. She didn't care. Angela Agrizi told us about even the types of cups this woman is drinking the coffee with. She told us about the designs of her sofas, the mat, and the colors of the mat. <laughs> but that didn't stop Novelam Konyani to say that, okay, I was exposed in the Zondo Commission. Now I'm not going to uh, uh, I'm not going to accept this appointment of being the first de secretary general of the ANC. I'm not going to accept that. I know that I was deeply exposed in the Zondo Commission. Nomvulam Konyani didn't do that. So why is Nomvulam Konyani? Why does Nomvulam Konyani actually thinks that <laughs> Zizi Kota is going to say my name was on the list that was submitted to the IEC, but because because I was charged <laughs> and because. I adhere to the step aside. I, I, I am now resigning as the member of parliament. Zizi Kota is not going to do that, man. If Zizi Kota actually resigns as the member of parliament, guys, I'm coming here and I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to tell me what I'm going to do for my punishment. <laughs> At least that was already submitted to the IEC 
And therefore, on the basis of me having been charged, I now submit my letter of stepping aside as a member of parliament. That will be good for the ANC, that will be good for him, that will be good for the country. Final question. The president has been keeping the country on tenterhooks. When is the announcement? I assume your, 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 your organization here, you would have done a lot of research. International best practice, other countries have taken almost one month, five, five days to, to, to put together a government, a, a coalition government. Others have gone to 524 days. How many days are we now in? Um, it's something that we have never had. It's not the same as the government of national unity of 1994. It's a government of national unity that was not uh, expected. Everybody assumed that we'll have a, a, a majority and have everybody. But I'm saying we are almost there. South Africans must believe in this particular process. And the reason why we have not gone out to tell the nation about uh, the, the dynamics there, it's precisely because we do not want to to scare and make people uncomfortable. Unfortunate, others opted to do that. <laughs> We're at the doorstep. <laughs> All right, well, on that very pregnant pause, we are at the doorstep of this announcement. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thank you, Tony. So guys, what are your thoughts, man? What do you think about this whole DA making the demands and South Africans not being able to understand that these are negotiations, everyone is making demands, but it doesn't mean that all of the demands that were made by the people are going to be met. I think it was, it actually exposed us as the people in this country that, man, maybe we are not as smart as we like to think, man. Maybe we are not as sophisticated as we would like to think because these are negotiations. It's like when a player, like a soccer player, actually leaves a certain club to go to another club, to another club. Of course, the club that wants to buy him, they will come and say that, guys, how about we give you five million rands? And that, and that, the club that the player belongs belongs to, they will say, no, this player is too good, man. You can't give us five million rands. At least make it nine million rands. And that one will come and say, guys, we give you seven point five million rands. These are negotiations. These are negotiations. I don't know why people were making so much noise about that letter of demand from the DA because these are negotiations. It doesn't mean that they are going to get what they actually demanded. These are, are nothing but negotiations. But South Africans, be, be, being who they are, they decided to be outraged over everything that was said. And they decided to be outraged over that leaked paper of the DA. Like It was very disappointing to see how people actually reacted to that letter. Guys, so please tell me what you think. Go to the comment section. Don't forget to hit that like button. And the most important part, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. My name is Thomas Mabaso. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.